Hello team, Pastor Steve here, and I am uh, bringing you our Care Ally training uh, via video. So many of you have seen the first portion of this, but many of you haven't. So I am going to just put together uh, the full training um, in multiple parts so that we have from the beginning to end all on video and we can share it, we can review it from time to time. Uh, hopefully I'll have some questions at the end for you to answer, uh, however I put this out to you. And, uh, but, uh, so we're just gonna begin. And I wanna just open with prayer before we continue and we'll just uh, dive right into some of the notes here. Uh, hopefully uh, you received the complete set of notes for the one-on-one -on -one ally training and uh, so we'll encourage you to follow along with those make some extra notes ask questions um, or write down questions that you can ask later uh, but uh, uh, just sit back and relax and watch these as you can and um, and then follow up with some of the questions that we'll have available as well so let's open with some prayer god we just thank you for who you are we know that you're in control of all things I thank you for these that have chosen to volunteer their hearts, their lives, and their time uh, in this way to come alongside others uh, and to, to provide some counsel, to provide some prayer, to provide support to people, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ who need it. So Lord, I pray that you'll bless them and that you'll bless our time as we just walk through these notes and uh, walk through some of the things that we need to be on the same page with as a team. So thank you, and we ask for your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so open up your notes. One-on-one -on -one allies training. Uh, the theology of caring is where we're going to begin first here. And uh, I see the first thing in regards to why we do what we do in the care ministry, it all comes from Scripture, and it all comes from what I see God doing in the lives of man, and then ultimately how we see Jesus Christ living His life before us. And so the first thing I want us to look at is what I call the interruption. In Genesis chapter 1, we see the cadence of creation taking place, right? You know, in the beginning, uh, things were made, so uh, God creates, He declares that it's good, the day is done, and we repeat. You know, God creates, the day is done, and we repeat. So that's kind of the cadence in, in creation. But when He came to man, that was interrupted. That cadence, if you will, was interrupted. And so when we see in verse 28 that when it came to man, He blessed them, and then he talked to them. So if you have your Bibles, feel free to kind of take a note there and look at that in uh, first or in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. It's, it's pretty profound, uh, the difference there from when he created, you know, the heavens and the earth, the stars, the land, the sea, the animals. But when he came to man, he blessed them and he talked with them. So though they were perfect, in a perfect relationship, they needed God to help them figure out life. And that's significant to you and I because it creates, it, it signifies a need that man had, that male and female had, that the rest of the kingdom didn't have. They didn't have that need. He was created, uh, or he created man to be dependent on him. Uh, did not need, uh, they did not need help because they were sinners, because they weren't yet, but they needed help because they were human. And that is a basic foundational human need that we all have, that everyone we minister to has, that all of mankind has, is uh, to need help, to, to receive help and to be dependent on God. So we were created to be dependent, we were created to need help, and we were created to be cared for. <clears throat> Paul David Tripp said, personal ministry must begin with a humble recognition of the inescapable nature of our need. Do we understand the fact that we have needs? And so as caregivers, as allies, first of all, I think we need to understand that we are needy, right? That, that we are a, a individual 
who needs God's help, who needs others' help, who is needy and dependent. Um, sometimes we don't like to think that way, especially in our Western culture and in our Western way of thinking. But, uh, but that's true because that's humanity. And so as you think about it, it, look in your notes there where we talk about the basic human, uh, human side of things. So as humans, we need truth outside of ourselves. We need God's interpretation of our existence. Those are things that we can't develop on our own. It, it has to come from outside of us. Um, we were created to be worshipers. You see a little illustration there from Bob Dylan. You know, he recognized that you got to love somebody, right? You're going to have to serve somebody. It's going to happen. A history passed every people group, every tribe, every uh, nationality, a group of any kind that you will find that they there was some kind of worship. There was some kind of recognition of, of a higher being, of a creator. And uh, to worship was a great need that was there. And so we were created to be worshipers. So the very foundational uh, reality of humans is that we, we need truth outside of ourselves. And we need God's interpretation of our existence to tell us our purpose, to tell us what we have. And we're dependent. And so we're dependent, we're in need, and uh, that's our basic, uh, our basic makeup. <clears throat> now, take that a step further as Christians. So here we are as followers of Christ seeking to help others. What does that mean for us? Well, um, is the Bible and the Holy Spirit enough? And it's, it's, all, it's, it's almost like uh, uh, borders on blasphemy to say, no, it's not. But that's what God this is how God laid it out, right? He's given us his scripture. All scripture is, is given and is, is uh, God-breathed for all that we need in scripture. So there is a sufficiency in scripture. And the Holy Spirit's provided everything we need for life of godliness. Uh, scripture tells us that too. So the Bible and the Holy Spirit in one sense are enough, but God had other plans. And, uh, and that is to include the body of Christ. God chooses to use people to share his word and to encourage with the work of the Holy Spirit, all three working together. So in one sense, the Bible and the Holy Spirit are enough, but really in the whole picture, he needs you and I, uh, or he doesn't need you and I, he has chosen to use you and I. In fact, you look in all of Scripture, from the Genesis to Revelation, all the activities in the history of mankind, and you'll see that God used people to bring about what he wanted to bring about or change what he wanted to change. Outside of creation, everything he did through people. That was God's choice. That was God's MO, if you will. And I could even argue that creation uh, was that way, is that there were three involved with the Trinity. Uh, but either way, the fact is that people are important. Hebrews chapter 3 reminds us that, that believers are working together. There's a warning about working together and being together and uh, to provide answers to one another. God chose people in the body of Christ to be there, to bear one another's burdens, to help one another, to meet that need, to point to the dependence in Christ. And so it's all together. And that's where we as Christians come into play there as well. So that's a little bit of the interruption that we see in God uh, in establishing as humanity our basic need. We, we, we need help and we need God to inform us. And uh, that's a, a beautiful thing to realize and to come to grips with. <clears throat> and then secondly, the thing in this first session I want us to look at is Jesus' example. Of, of caring in regards to this theology of caring as I call it uh, we want to look at Jesus example and uh, you see in your notes there the key to relationships the key to caring is an understanding of the incarnation because it is Jesus personal model for us the incarnation of Jesus Christ Jesus God in the flesh Jesus becoming man down to earth to meet us where we are at that event, that incarnation of Jesus Christ, beautiful and perfect example of, of how we can care as, as how he reached out to man. Um, it's hard for us to fully grasp um, that God became man 
and was 100% God and man. In, in, in theology, we call that the hypostatic union, 100% God, 100% man in one person. Um, yeah, we don't, it's hard to grasp that. We can acknowledge it and we can believe it, but to truly get it, I don't know that it's possible. But anyway, uh, it's there, it's true. Um, our religious senses are not completely satisfied with that. Um, it sounds almost scandalous to, to think that, that God came to earth in the form of a servant. Um, we struggle with the reality of who Jesus was and how he lived. Um, you know, we see that even in some of the songs. You see some examples there in your notes uh, of our decor of Jesus looking quite you know, like he just came from the hairdresser, um, and, and, you know, beautiful complexion and and uh, perfect. Um, and yet he probably wasn't like that. Um, even our song, Away in a Manger, uh, you know, uh, No Crying He Makes, the song says, well, you know, that's making him other than human um, in a lot of ways. But the truth is, it's who he was. And uh, so we have some some key points to consider in Jesus becoming man that teach us, the reason we're going to look through this is it teaches us how to have compassion, how to care, and how to, it's just that foundational theology behind what we do as one-on-one -on -one allies. Okay, so strap, your, uh, strap in your seat and uh, let's take a look at the incarnation as we see it laid out in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. Again, that's Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. You can just follow the notes, or if you have your Bible, it's a great place to, to have your companion there with you as well. So the first point I want us to see is, is Christ's involvement with man, his involvement. In other words, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, the latter part, it says he was born as a human being. John 1, 14 reminds us of this. There's some other passages there I'll give you. I uh, won't reiterate and read all those uh, in this video. But uh, take a look at those. They're in your notes. Uh, Matthew 1, 23, Philippians chapter 2, all together. But we must become accessible to others by intentionally placing ourselves in the midst of their subculture. Because that's what Jesus did. He involved himself in humanity. And uh, that's what we want to do. That's what we're called to do. Um, we get objections. Uh, we may have objections, and you can see kind of the list there. Um, I don't feel comfortable in those situations. I don't have time to do this. Uh, they really wouldn't want me to be there, and uh, it's not that important. It won't make a difference, uh, and on and on the list can go, right? Um, and then there's some responses to that. So take, it, take some time to look through those as well and to be familiar with some of those and, and just remind yourself what Christ is doing for us and what he's called us to do by following his example. So there's being involved with, with others, being involved. Christ showed us that. And then not only did he get involved, but there's uh, his appreciation for man. Um, the first part of verse 7 in Philippians chapter 2, we see that he gave up his divine privileges and, his, and positioned himself as a slave. That's kind of the summary there, right? He gave up his divine privileges he didn't stop being God, but he gave up his divine privileges and became in the position of a slave. That, that's remarkable in and of itself, right? But he did that because he had such great interest and genuine love for man, for mankind. That's why he did that. He, uh, it, uh, a couple other passages there in your notes, Luke 7, 34, uh, just participated in the culture because he had such interest in love and care for us. Um, I call that the appreciation, right? We must pay attention and listen far more to people than we normally do. You know, the age old argument, you know, uh, that comes against uh, people in our relationships is, you know, how you doing? Fine. And we move on. And we're not really wanting to know how they're doing. We, it's just something that, that sounds nice and we say. And quite frankly, we have to get beyond that, right? We are, are called to, to be genuinely uh, appreciative of each other and caring for each other. So um, Doug Stevens said, uh, love is not primarily a feeling. It is a decision to be for someone else. And uh, that's a beautiful thought there. So the question we could ask here is, why is this so significant? 
to understanding the ministry of Jesus? And I'm not going to answer that for you. I just want you to contemplate that question that's in your notes. Why is this so significant to understanding the ministry of Jesus? I want to go to the third key point to ponder here, and uh, that is the secret to what Christ is doing here. Uh, Verse 6 in Philippians chapter 2 says, Equality with God was not something that he felt he needed to cling to or to hold on to and to not let go of. Um, Mark 8, Mark 5, a couple other passages there in your notes as well. Please look these up and kind of see this whole put together here. What do I mean by the secret? Well, patience with people involves risks. So we... Uh, need to allow our humanness to be enough. People deserve better than the hustle and hype of the glib pitchman, uh, it says there. And that's so true. Um, You know, we we don't have to pretend that we're something we're not. Uh, It's just being real with people um, and not using something that's, um, you know, that's, that we could, you know, we could use uh, to lord over someone or, or something like that. It's it's not about that. It's just about being patient with people. It's about being human with people. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. And the question there for you to consider, how are you challenged by the secretive, incognito nature of the ministry of Jesus? You see, Jesus came as a servant, came as a human being. He didn't come in, you know, in a huge chariot from the sky and big robes and crown and, you know, with with a, uh, an army to take over and, and to say, hey, uh, he just came quietly and just hum- humanely, humanly, right? Um, something to think about. I think that's profound. Uh, another key in this incarnation example from Jesus Christ is the healing. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says that he died a criminal's death on the cross. A couple other passages there, Luke 4, 40. Uh, Luke 17, 11 through 19. You see, Jesus moved back and forth across all social barriers, and uh, that aggravates the establishment. Um, we don't like to think of Jesus as mingling with who he mingled with, right? At least the church typically and traditionally doesn't care for that. We like to think of, of you know, there's a you know there's something that you need to fix and that's that's not what Jesus brought he brought healing to all and to especially those who needed it you know you often hear a kind of a cliche but it's true the church is meant to be a hospital not a country club and uh, that's what Jesus gave us an example for um, bringing reconciliation and when you do that that causes disruption um, there's a note there about a song called My Jesus by Todd Agnew. I encourage you to to give a listen to that. We listened to that in the live class a while back, and uh, I just, it's just a powerful song. Uh, It it rocked my world several years ago when I first heard it, and it just gives us that that picture of the healing and and reality and humanness of who Jesus was and his heart for us. Uh, The next point I want us to look at is the strategy. Of Jesus in Philippians 2:20, this is stepping ahead outside of the actual account of the incarnation. But we see that that Paul is re- is sharing all this, and then he says in in regards to someone that he's working with, he's he's wanting them to welcome Timothy, and he says, "I have no one else like Timothy." So what's happening here later on in the in the passage of Philippians chapter two, and you can see the same idea take place in John three and in Luke nine, and it's it's a strategy of winning people. And uh, it's investing in people to win people to Christ so that they can do the same. It's multiplying. It's, it's people through people through people. Again, God has chosen. He's given us His Word. He's given us the Holy Spirit. But who's He given the Holy Spirit to? You and I. So He wants to use people, and that's His strategy. People, people like you, uh, our care allies, to do just that. So there's a question there. Who are you investing in? Uh, Can you remain a clean Christian and still identify with others that aren't or need your help? How is this accomplished? How do you do that? Just contemplate those questions um, and uh, and take some time to let God share with you and meditate on, on those passages there as well. Another key point is the support. Backing up to Philippians verses one, uh, Philippians two, verses one and two, it reminds us and talks about the fellowship of the Spirit. We are to fellowship together. If there's any fellowship together in the Spirit, if that's our reality, 
um, then uh, nourishing that comes from him and giving to others is critical. Uh, we need to be there for each other and support one another. You know, a couple other passages there for you. Please look into those as well. Another key point is the motive. Uh, verse 11 of Philippians chapter 2, Paul says to the, in, in regards to Christ that he did it to the glory of God the Father. He was consumed. Jesus Christ came to this earth not for himself, but for his Father's glory and for his Father's mission. And for so he was consumed. Everything he did was for that mission. He was consumed with that. You see a couple other passages there that kind of reiterate this. John 4 and John 8. Uh, again, please look those up. But uh, notice a little paragraph there. When Teresa of Calcutta was asked why she continued to minister to the dispossessed and dying when her ministry could only relieve a small fraction of the misery, she said, God has not called me to be successful, only to be faithful. That's profound. That was her motive, was to just love people, to reach people, to show people Jesus. That's our mission, right? Jesus' mission was focused and solely on glorifying God the Father. Our mission is doing the same through showing people Jesus Christ, and uh, that should be why we love people, why we care about people, why we reach out to people, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. That's the motive that's behind what we do as one-on-one -on -one allies, and I hope that's your motive. And then finally, there's the cost. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. In the same passage here, uh, he humbled himself to a position and became obedient even to the death of the cross. He recognized the cost, and there was cost for what he did, but people were important enough. He loved them more than anything. He wanted a relationship with them. He appreciated who they were. He entered into who they were. He gave himself for it, and even though there was a cost to it, Caring as Jesus cared will cost us our lives in some way. Maybe it's time, maybe it's money, maybe it's dignity, maybe it's something along the lines that makes us uncomfortable. Um, but Jesus went beyond being uncomfortable. And it seems like we could just follow that example and allow ourselves to be used for him, even with the cost that might be there. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. When God has laid on your heart to be a, an ally, to come along somebody that's hurting and in need, because in some ways you, you will be, you, there will be a cost. You, there will be a sacrifice of time. There will be a sacrifice of, of uh, you know, giving part of yourself or, or just taking time with someone um, and even kind of feeling in a, in a, uh, a, a, uh, figurative sense, sorry about that, in a figurative sense, bleeding for them as well. And uh, so consider the cost, um, but be, be excited to share that with other people. And so that is, in a nutshell, what I see as the theology of caring as we look at the incarnation of Christ and how that is our example from the beginning to end to follow Jesus Christ and how he came and entered into life for us, we can enter into life for others. And with that, we'll close session one, and we'll continue on in your notes uh, looking at the biblical foundation next time. Thank you.